and welcome to Musher's Tales. So trapping season for most land animals ends in a couple of days, first of March. So uh, Martin is already finished, Martin Fisher already finished. And uh, I'm all picked up as of today, I have nothing in the woods. So the wolves go to town and the deer, that's it. The deer are on their own. So uh, I've been looking at various videos and everything and uh, thinking about a few things. And I decided I was gonna show you uh, our Martin box. What do we use to catch Martin? If I keep on saying we when I'm talking about trapping, it's because I don't trap alone, I have a partner. I've had the same trapping partner for uh, well over 30 years, say 34 years or something like that. And uh, we trap together. We trap together, you know, and we split everything half and half, right down the middle. Uh, trapping together does not mean we hold hands when we're trapping. I mean, we, we used to barely see each other when trapping. We'd communicate over the phone when we were both working, but now that we're both retired, uh, we do go together for safety reasons. But uh, my partner stops a lot earlier than I do. Uh, I have the bug bad, like, I picked up my wool stuff today. Like, he's, uh, he's a beaver trapper. So once he has his beaver, he calms down quite a bit. He has it out of the system. But uh, I just like checking traps. So whenever I say we, that's what I'm talking about. My buddy and I. Different Martin trappers, you'll have 10 different styles of boxes. So I'm going to show you what we use. I mean, it's not rocket science. Box blocked by a trap with bait inside the box. So the animal has to go through the trap to get to the bait. That's all there is to it. But there's uh, certain styles people like for different reasons. I'm gonna show you what, uh, what we use uh, and I'm gonna tell you why. So uh, when my partner and I started off way back when, we weren't covering much ground, uh, about 75 square kilometers. So that's, uh, that's not too big. And uh, we'd hit it hard till Christmas. And then it was, you know, you have to be careful because you'd empty it out. 75 square kilometers is not too big if you put a lot of pressure on it. So uh, I tried different boxes. Uh, basically, it was pretty well the same. It was a, a leading pole. We take the chainsaw, flatten the top, put a box on it. And uh, Martin and Fisher would run up the pole and uh, obviously get caught in the trap and hang down. Uh, everything was about four feet off the ground. We'd catch a lynx once in a blue moon. We'd go up the pole. And uh, we'd also catch a lot of incidentals. Incidentals are things you don't want to catch. Uh, things like birds, uh, gray jays, you know, which seem to clog up traps, flying squirrels, and red squirrels. Now, I have no problem with a red squirrel. I mean, you can skin them for a buck. You know, they make, uh, they make stuff out of that. So that's okay. But I mean, if, if you have a, a, a red squirrel in your trap and you miss a mark because of it, but you're not too happy, so uh, it worked. It worked, was fine, but uh, we figured there had to be a better way. At the same time, we're often rebaiting and rebaiting and rebaiting. When you're hauling around stinky bait and you have to stop and bait, it eats up your day. So uh, we wanted a better, faster way. We also acquired more trap lines. So uh, I actually, I got three more lines. So right now we're running about 300 square kilometers. So in order to be able to cover all that territory, and we were still working at the time, we had to have an efficiency. You had to really not waste too much time doing things that you didn't have to do. So one of those was baiting. Not only was it time consuming, but it was also another thing to haul around. And uh, the vehicles are already full enough. When you're trapping, you always have a lot of gear. So you start hauling around buckets of bait on top of that, it wasn't very good. Add cold weather and you have to take the bucket out and get bait out and then whack off a piece and chop it and everything. Uh, again, eats up more time. So we wanted to eliminate that. So uh, talked it over with different people. Talked it over with one, a long liner, who uh, was called Mingo. And uh, he was running a lot of uh, a big line, and he was a big Martin trapper, but he also had really good carpentry skills. Uh, he knew what he was doing, and he knew how to long line things, and uh, he was catching a lot of Martin. So uh, I asked him what he was using, and he described his box for us and showed me a few pictures. And this is why, because it's what we use now, comes from his original idea 
I call this box the Mingo box. Now, it's not quite the same as Mingo described to us and showed us in pictures. Uh, my trapping partner, he modified it. He added a few twists to it that have uh, increased the efficiency and uh, made it a better, a better box for trapping. My trapping partner is the guy that makes the box. Uh, he's the kind of guy that an eighth of an inch is really important. And I'm the kind of guy that'll cut a piece of plywood with a chainsaw. So the boxes are, are tailor-made, so uh, he has all the credit for that. Uh, what I do is I cut down the tree, have the wood sawn, give him the boards, and he takes over from there. So the construction of the box is up to him. The lumber itself comes from me. We decided in uh, making our boxes that we wanted the boxes to be vertical and entrance from the bottom. A couple of reasons from this. Uh, first of all, we wanted the box off the ground. Why? We're trying to avoid female martin. Uh, according to what I've read, female martin are less prone to climb. Okay, so if you put the box off the ground, there's uh, less chance of catching a female martin, and we don't want female martin because that's, that's where your next year's catch is, so we want to avoid them. You're going to catch them anyways, but we don't want to be targeting, targeting them. And uh, the other reason is we want the boxes way off the ground is we're not running these traps every day. They're killer traps. Okay, snap, it's lights out. Martin are dead, like, well, if it's not instant, it's awful close to instant. And uh, no point checking traps every day when you can check them in four or five days and your catch is there. So we wanted everything suspended off the ground, way off the ground. Other reason is uh, when you're long lighting like we are, what you want is uh, you want efficiency, which means one type of box, one type of trap. So you're not changing different models of traps. It's one kind of trap every time, every time you set a box. So uh, we're going with 120 mags, 120 magnums, either Belil's or LDL's, didn't matter, both fit in the box. And uh, we have Fisher. So uh, a fisher is a very powerful, an powerful animal and uh, we wanted the fisher not to have any contact with the ground. So, the box. Not much to it, right? Made out of boards, either balsam fir or spruce, whatever I cut down, that's wide enough. And uh, we prefer boards to plywood because the plywood really gets hit hard by the squirrels and gets chewed. We find that uh, not using plywood saves a lot of chewing. I'm not going to go over the sizes of the box because uh, there's so many different models of traps that it would be useless information for you. Slots in the side to hold the springs. Now, before it gets interesting, it's a box with top and the bottom. In other words, if you see what I'm doing right now, I'm sliding off the top. And by sliding off the top, I reveal a compartment. The bait goes on that compartment. In other words, the animals cannot get to the bait because there's a screen on the bottom and when we close this here, there's a screen on the top. You fill up the box full of bait once and the birds and the squirrels and the mice can peck from the top. So you have your birds there and they're pecking away. Uh, they're landing on the top, they have access to the food. They don't go underneath to get caught. So they have access to their food. You cut down a lot of your squirrels for the same reason. They're sitting on top of the box, nibbling away or trying to get through. So you don't catch, I'm not saying you don't catch any, but you catch much, much fewer, fewer incidentals of any kind. And the real beauty of it is, you only bait once. Now when I'm saying you only bait once, uh, we don't trap that long. So uh, basically, our Martin trapping is finished by Christmas. We hit hard, okay, we hit thoroughly, but uh, we stop before Christmas because we find if we go too long, we clean up too much and it damages our population. So uh, we bait once in a season. That's a big time saver. We bait once at the beginning, bait properly, and it's done. Not saying we don't bring bait, because once in a while uh, the unexpected happens, like a bear or something, and uh, you'll need some bait, 
but basically speaking, bait once and it's done. These sides here are for drywalls, corners for drywalls. At first, we just had two. And you just slide the screen back and forth. Now, where the modifications came in, uh, all of a sudden we'd have a fisher, and the fisher would be able to pull up the screen and you'd be missing bait. So we added this third piece here, which we turn around and we screw it in. And that solved a lot of problems. But still, once in a while, a fisher, by bracing its legs, pulling up, would have access to the bait. So we added something else again. Steel strapping. We put a band of steel strapping right across. View the inside of the box. So these little dowels hold the bottom. Very well made. And it's attached with two screws. The box is vertical. So the box has the bait towards the top. Whoops, there we're going. The box is vertical. And we put one screw right through the top there. And another screw at an angle in the bottom. Two screws, very steady. Notice the nails in the side here, headless nails. Why? Uh, we hooked this, the safeties on to hold the trap in place. So when the trap's in place, you have the springs holding it in, the tension from the springs. But we also have the safeties hooked on this. I don't really know if it makes a difference or not. Uh, we don't have many traps hanging with nothing in it. It happens, but not very often. Uh, Buddy's really big on it though. So uh, we're, the, the logic is, if a Martin or Fisher goes on the side and uses a spring to climb, well, the trap won't fall because it's held by the spring. Uh, excuse me, it's held by the safety. So the end of the safety here, this curved part right here, fits on that. So one more thing that helps. Playing with wire, wiring traps, takes time, waste of time. So uh, we wanted a fast, efficient way of connecting our traps. It would take seconds. So uh, I looked at a few things of what people made and uh, I decided to do it on the cheap. And this is what I came up with. So a toggle attach system for the trap. So I basically took a nail, you'll remember if they're four or five inch nail, and uh, with two pair of vice grips and something around, I just wrapped it around and uh, attached this, the double ferrule to a cable and the other end of the cable is a loop. Here I have a bunch of them because we repair boxes, we bring some of these or we install new boxes. So I could probably have a dozen here. So we have a loop up top and we have these things here and uh, the nail goes through the swivel of the trap. So in seconds you just slip this through. Easier to do with two hands. And there you go. Never, never, never had one come off. Never. Never. And uh, we've had some, uh, well, like, you know, we've had bears get caught on them and pull on them. You know, the bear pulls out of the trap, but uh, everything's just as it is. Okay, never had one come off. And again, to take it off, really quick too. So it's done in seconds. We like our animals to be uh, swung away from the tree. Why? Don't want any sap, okay? Don't want any sap in the animal. And also, if it's away from a tree, less danger of something climbing the tree and hanging onto the tree and chewing on your catch, like another marten or like a mole or a shrew or uh, anything that likes to make nests out of marten fur. So uh, what we always do is we have a piece of wood, two by four or two by six, whatever, whatever, or even a branch, and uh, we nail it uh, horizontal to the tree, so it's hanging off the side. So the box is on the tree, and we have this arm sticking out which, with our toggle. So when the animal's caught, the trap falls from the box and swings to the side. 
so the animal's away from the tree. And also, in the case of a fisher, if a fisher can brace its feet anywhere, he's much stronger. So if he's completely suspended off the ground, he's got that trap around his neck, he's in real trouble and he's not going anywhere. If he can brace himself against a tree, well, like it or not, uh, fisher are really strong animals and uh, things can get a little more complicated with such a small trap. Another advantage of having the toggle on this uh, piece of, uh, of horizontal 2x4, 2x6 or branch is uh, the, the catch swinging away makes it easy to see if you have a catch. Uh, that helps quite a bit. So you can see basically right away if you've caught something or not. Uh, we always make sure we see a spring. We have to check our springs because it does happen pretty frequently that you'll have a catch and the, uh, the trap will not fall away from the box. If it's a smaller martin, sometimes they'll just, they'll, they, they get killed so instantly, they just stay there and the trap doesn't even, doesn't fall away. So that happens too. So we always like seeing a spring, make sure the spring is, uh, if the spring isn't compressed, well, obviously, you know, something's in there and uh, you have a look or the trap could just be sprung, which happens too. Uh, Mingo uh, and his partner told me that uh, they were big skidoo trappers and they had a huge run and uh, they tie flagging to their uh, one of their springs. So basically they'd skim by in their skidoo and trying to find their box. Well, they they just, if you see the flagging to the side, well then you know obviously that your, your trap is swung to the side and there's something in the trap. So they would save time by doing that. Uh, how much time do we save? Well, uh, it's nothing to do, uh, we can do 50 boxes in a day pretty easily. Okay, well not pretty easily. It's a, you're gonna be tired at the end of the day, but it's definitely doable. When you calculate a five gallon bucket full of bait is good from 10 to 12 boxes to bait. And uh, we do, uh, you know, pretty well on Martin box every 0.5 of a kilometer. So if you put in 50, you cover 25 kilometers. 25 kilometers, a few days like that, you're starting to cover quite a bit of territory. So uh, that's it. I mean, if for luring, uh, we take a pill bottle, Q-tip, have the dip the Q-tip in the pill bottle, put the lid on it, and uh, everything's all set up beforehand. So opening day, the guy who's driving, he takes care of the traps. The guy who doesn't have to touch anything, he's playing with the lure and he's playing with the bait. So he's the guy with the gloves. So hop out, grab the bait bucket, put bait in. As you're putting the bait in, your partner is attaching the trap. Once the bait's in, the guy with the, the bait uh, chucks the lure in. Just you open up the pill bottle, put the pill bottle and the lid of the pill bottle inside the box. Turn around, go back to the truck to put more bait inside your bucket for the next trap. Meanwhile, uh, your partner is, the trap's already open because they're all open ahead of time. And uh, he's installed the trap and he's taken a screwdriver and he slid the screen back in place and he screwed that little piece of drywall siding back on and it's off to the next trap. It's pretty quick. It takes longer to, uh, to describe it than it does to do it pretty well. And uh, it's a good system. We've used it for several years and uh, we don't see any plans on changing it. We seem to have uh, found finally what we wanted. Thank you, Mingo. That's it for now. Hope you found this interesting. Maybe it helps you out. Till the next time.